Today marks the third anniversary of the Grenfell Tower tragedy, when 72 people died, as you know, in a fire in West London. But across the country, thousands of people are still living in homes covered in dangerous cladding. Grenfell was the worst residential fire since the Second World War. Last October, the use of cladding made from aluminium composite materials was highlighted by the first phase of an inquiry. The government put up £600 million for its removal from other blocks. That left the private sector. In March, the Chancellor, Richie Sunak, added another billion for buildings over 18 metres tall. Many are paying higher insurance, funding walking watch patrols, and say their homes are now worthless. And more than 450 buildings in 51 boroughs still have ACM. Salford, Newham, Greenwich and Tower Hamlets have most, followed by places including Manchester, Leeds, Liverpool and Sheffield. Well, despite the billion pounds the government's pledged for the private sector, some people are still out of pocket. Nathan Prescott lives in Manchester and because his block had started remedial work removing the cladding before the announcement, they're not eligible. It's left him with a bill of more than £18,000. My name is Nathan and I'm a leaseholder in Skyline Central in Manchester where I bought in late 2015. When we heard that the clad cladding system needed replacing, um, we automatically assumed that it would be the freeholder buildings insurance or indeed an HBC warranty that would cover the costs of this. However, uh, that turned out not to be the case. My apartment alone um, was billed for just over £18,500. As leaseholders, we were left just devastated. lot of the advice from central government was that freeholders should be taking action to make the buildings that we live in safe and as it happened our freeholder wanted to do exactly that. So today I am creating a new building safety fund worth one billion pounds. We were devastated, we were shocked, we were angry. Members of the community in Skyline, many of whom have had their lives put on hold because of these life-changing sums, uh, they've had to stop the idea of having a baby, they've not been able to sell apartments, um, and all of these things are just quite unjust, and we really desperately hope that somehow we can get through to government and that they listen to our plight. That's the view of uh, Nathan Prescott, who uh, lives in Manchester. Earlier, I spoke to Joe Delaney from the Grenfell Action Group. I started by asking him about the stress that he and others are feeling three years on. It's taken quite a toll, um, not just on those who were affected that night, but, I mean, the local community that has been affected every night ever since. You know, um, and it's not just them who are affected, you know, it's also people who are in blocks across the country which have questionable materials on them. It really is an emotional toll um, that, that is very, very, um, it's very, very grating. It wears away at you. Sadly, that's why we've seen so many in our community who've had um, mental health issues or other health problems or, you know, have even gone as far as, you know, uh, taking their own life on occasion. The public inquiry is due to restart. It, it would have restarted, wouldn't it, but for coronavirus. Do you have confidence that, that when it does, uh, things will move forward? Um, I, I, I was very impressed with Sir Martin Morbick's first report, but frankly, um, I have no more faith in the inquiry process now because of the immunity that's been granted to the corporates that are participating. And we didn't need these people to, to have immunity in order to know these things because we knew them already from the documentary evidence that was there. We seem to be rather sadly following the, the paths of the victims of Hillsborough at the moment. 
and you know their tragic journey has taken them 30 years so far and they've still not seen justice and I fear now that you know we have set ourselves on a similar course. What therefore is your message to all those other people as you mentioned up and down the country who are living in buildings where they're not sure what's on the outside or they know what's on the outside and they're scared of what's on the outside. If your landlord or if your freeholder in your building is not fixing matters for you, don't pay them rent, don't pay service charges, uh, hold it all, you know, hold it on an escrow account, get together with all of your neighbours, they can't evict all of you at once, you know, it's collectively that we can win this, you know, one voice does nothing, you know, but one voice in a chorus uh, that you know, you can it can it could burst eardrums. It can be that loud. Joe Delaney there, um, Chi and, and Lee. Uh, Chi, Labour pledged to put, to put a billion pounds in their manifesto in in December to sort this out. That's what the government now is 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 pledging. We know it's not enough. What what should be done? Well, uh, it's just unforgivable that three years later we still haven't got justice for for Grenfell, and we still have. 50, up to 50,000 people who are living in homes with this kind of, of cladding. What we need now to see is enforcement. You know, the private sector, particularly pri the private sector buildings, which haven't had their cladding replaced, we need enforcement action. And we also need to make sure that, uh, as, as your segment showed, you know, people, um, the, the fund that they've got is on a what first come first serve basis, mm. and it seems to be it's only up to the uh, freeholder to take advantage of it. So we need action and support for leaseholders. And that also goes to the basis of our broken leasehold system, where so many leaseholders find themselves okay. paying for the mistakes of a, of, of a freeholder and uh, at the mercy of the freeholder. Um, Lee, um, Boris Johnson will tonight tell a memorial service that, that Grenfell cannot be allowed to happen again. An all-party report this week said it was unfair to expect leaseholders to, to pay or expect residents to pay. It's going to cost £15 billion to sort it. Um, the government has got to deal with this now, hasn't it? For, if for no other reason than to honour the 72 people who died. Well, it, it was an immensely tragic event what happened three years ago. I was elected just a few days before it happened, so it really came home to many of us who were elected in 2017. The difficulty as a former, as a former Westminster councillor, a person who represented areas like this just a few miles away, I have some background in this. What we've got to make sure, as you say, is that this doesn't happen again and we learn the lessons. And the government has undertaken a programme over the last three years of introducing new legislation, changing regulations, ensuring ultimately that the cladding that needs to come down does come down. And as you said, we've offered an additional billion pounds to do that. So there's a huge amount of work going on to make sure that we get on yeah. top of this problem and make sure it doesn't happen again, quite rightly. Uh, Lee, thank you.